good morning students our today's lecture is on anatomy of coronary arteries part second in this session we are going to discuss anatomical basis of ischemic heart diseases the learning objectives for my today's session are i am going to describe ischemic heart diseases under following headings definition of ischemic heart diseases anatomical basis of ischemic heart diseases anatomy of coronary angiography anatomical basis of cardiological interventions in ischemic heart diseases we are also going to describe venous drainage of heart there are mcq type questions at the end for the revision of session 1 and session 2 or coronary arteries what are coronary heart diseases coronary artery disease or coronary heart disease is a leading cause of death worldwide these diseases are caused due to the reduction in blood flow to the myocardium and has several causes and consequences coronary heart diseases can result due to atherosclerosis which is the most common cause of coronary heart diseases thrombosis high blood pressure diabetes or smoking all these factors lead to a reduced flow of blood to the heart through physical obstruction or changes in the vessel wall angina pectoris describes the transient pain a person may feel on exercise or even at rest as a result of lack of oxygen to myocardium this pain is felt across the chest and radiates to the left arm and shoulder as students of anatomy we should be able to describe the anatomical basis of this referred pain why pain of the heart is felt by the patient on the inner side of his arm and shoulder angina pectoris if left untreated may soon progress to more severe consequences such as myocardial infarction and death now what is atherosclerosis as already said atherosclerosis is the commonest cause of coronary heart diseases it refers to subendothelial deposits of fat cholesterol and other substances in arterial walls resulting in formation of plaque which can reduce blood flow as a result of stenosis these subendothelial deposits cause stenosis of the coronaries so the blood flow distal to the stenosis is reduced this reduced blood flow leads to reduced delivery of oxygen to the myocardium leading to ischemia resulting in chest pain if this ischemia persists for a prolonged time it can lead to injury or infarct of the cardiac musculature what is commonly called as myocardial infarction the plaque can burst triggering a clot coronaries are commonly involved in atherosclerosis although it also affects other arteries of the body affection of coronary artery causes narrowing of vascular lumen and its consequences leading to coronary artery disease coronary artery disease may present with angina ischemia or myocardial infarction they are diagnosed and assessed by coronary angiography and managed by coronary angioplasty stents and coronary artery bypass graft what happens in atherosclerosis in this slide you can see two blood vessels on the left side is normal blood vessel consisting of three layers tunica intima media and adventitia on the right side of this slide you can see the subendothelial deposits of lipids calcium and other cellular debris leading to the narrowing of vessel what happens with the narrowing of the vessel the blood flow through this vessel distal to the narrowing is impaired resulting in ischemia or injury or infarct to the cardiac musculature as shown in this diagram there are subendothelial deposits of cholesterol and other lipids causing narrowing of the vessel at times endothelium ruptures leading to a clot formation this clot goes to the distal portion of the vessel blocks it thus impairing blood flow and oxygenation to the cardiac musculature resulting either in angina or infarct in this slide you can see the normal blood flow in the coronaries on one side and on the other side stenosis produced by the atherosclerosis leading to impaired blood flow distal to the obstruction now what are the consequences of this narrowing or infarct as already said distal to the obstruction the blood flow is reduced number 1 there may be clot formation blocking the vessel leading to ischemia there may be impaired blood flow distal to the obstruction and as a result of clot leading to ischemia ischemia gives chest pain 
and this chest being added to the inner side of the arm, shoulder and neck of the patient. As a student of anatomy, you have to explain the anatomical basis of this referred pain. As shown in this diagram, cardiac pain is referred to the inner side of the arm, shoulder and neck. Let me also ask you a question, why cardiac pain is related to the inner side of the arm, shoulder and neck. Let us go to the right side of this diagram. In this diagram, you, you can see the, how pain is carried from the heart. Pain is carried from the heart by sympathetic nerves. These sympathetic nerves terminate in the lower cervical and upper thoracic segments of the spinal cord. On the right side of this slide, you will see the pain from the medial side of the arm is transmitted by the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, which also terminates in the same segments of the supinal cord. So pain from the heart is transmitted by sympathetic fibers to the lower cervical and thoracic segment of the supinal cord. Medial cutaneous nerve of arm and forearm also early in the lower cervical and upper thoracic segments of the supinal cord. What are the causes of the cardiac pain? As already said, cardiac pain results either from ischemia, that is lack of oxygen, or injury. Injury is also called infarct. Prolonged ischemia leads to infarct, that is death of the cardiac myocytes. Both ischemia and injury produce cardiac pain. This cardiac pain is transmitted from heart by sympathetic nerves through the posterior route of the supinal nerve to the lower segments of the supinal cord. Pain pathway from the second of the arm is also transmitted from the arm through the posterior route of the supinal nerves to the same segments of the supinal cord that is lower cervical and upper thoracic segments of the supinal cord. Thus, the pain is referred to the inner side of the arm. The pain conducting sympathetic afferents transmit pain sensation caused either by ischemia or infarct. The pain can often be felt in the cutaneous regions of upper arm and forearm. This is because some of the dermatomas responsible for the cutaneous innervation are supplied by the same supinal cord levels as the visceral afferents of the heart. This is the mechanism behind pain being felt in the right shoulder region that is characteristic symptom of myocardial infarction. There are many theories of this referred pain. One of them is common dermatome theory. The second theory which is widely accepted is convergence theory that is pain fibers converge on the same spinal segments and neurons as shown in this diagram pain from the inner side of the arm and heart terminate in the same supinal segment. From there, the pain is carried to higher centers, which cannot differentiate between the two. This accounts for anatomical basis of referred pain. Now, what is coronary angiography? Coronary angiography remains the gold standard for detecting clinically significant atherosclerotic coronary artery disease. This technique was first performed by Dr. Mason in 1959. The indications for coronary angiography is ischemic heart disease or ischemic coronary diseases. So what does a cardiologist look for in coronary angiography? You as medical students should know the branches of coronary artery at dissection table, but you should be also able to interpret a coronary angiogram. As shown in this diagram, the cardiologist looks for the coronary arteries, their branches, Collateral ischemia formed after infarction. As already said in the previous class, coronary arteries are not anatomical end arteries, they are functional end arteries. So there is some chance of collateral formation. He also looks for stenosis, that is narrowing of the vessel, and also for the congenital anomalies. What do we see in this angiogram? We see left coronary artery, it is branch, that is left anterior descending. And this arrow represents the circumflex branch of left coronary artery. In this coronary angiogram, the stenosed left coronary vessel is demarcated by this vertical red arrow, and the stenosed left anterior descending is marked by this horizontal red arrow. How coronary angiography is done? Before proceeding for coronary angiography, explain the procedure to the patient and take consent from him. Clean the local area. So by local area, we mean whether we are going by radial or femoral route. 
give some local anesthetic there to reduce the pain. Pass cardiac catheter either through radial or femoral artery. Once catheter reaches arch of uter, dye is injected into coronaries and angiogram is taken. So in this diagram, femoral root has been used for coronary angiography. So catheter is passed into femoral artery. From there it goes into external iliac artery, then into the common iliac artery, abdominal iota. After abdominal iota, it enters into the thoracic iota. Thereafter, it enters into origin of the iota. Now, at this point, after the catheter enters the origin of the iota, we inject the dye into coronaries. As you know, coronaries originate from ascending iota. So, catheter is not passed into the coronaries. Simply, dye is injected into the coronaries. As shown in this diagram, we can see a catheter inside the ascending iota. Now, dye is injected inside coronaries. What happens to the dye? It goes with the bullet to the different branches of the coronary arteries, as shown by these red dotted lines. Now, what do we observe there? In certain cases, there is narrowing of the vessel, as shown in this diagram. This is the left coronary artery. You identify it by its mean trunk. This left coronary artery begins as a trunk, which then supplates into the left anterior descending coronary artery and circumflex artery. There is stenosis at in the trunk of the left coronary artery. There is also a stenotic lesion in the left anterior descending coronary artery. Remember this left anterior descending coronary artery is the commonest vessel involved in atherosclerosis. Now after the diagnosis of the coronary artery disease is made, what is the management of coronary artery stenosis, angioplasty and stent placement or the procedures of choice for coronary artery stenosis. Angioplasty is performed after diagnosing stenosis in coronary artery. How a cardiologist proceeds? Angioplasty and stent placement for the heart is the procedure of choice. Angioplasty is a procedure used to open human of blocked coronary arteries caused by coronary artery disease. It restores blood flow to the myocardium without open heart surgery. Angioplasty can be done in an emergency set restores blood flow to the myocardium without open heart surgery. So here we are using a stent to cure the stenosis. Angioplasty can be done in an emergency setting such as heart attack or it can be done as elective surgery. Certain patients are suffering from ischemic heart disease or coronary heart diseases. So cardiologists plans and put a stents inside their coronaries on elective basis. For angioplasty, a long thin tube or called catheter is put in femoral or radial artery and guided to the blocked coronary artery. The catheter has a tiny balloon at its tip. Once the catheter is in place, the balloon is inflated at the narrowed area of the vessel. This presses the plug or blood clot against the sides of the artery, making more room for the blood flow. This procedure is done under fluoroscopic guidance. So, what are the parts of a coronary artery stent? The coronary artery stent has a catheter, number one. Number two, metallic mesh, which can be expanded by inflation of the balloon and a balloon at the tip. Stents are now used in nearly all angioplastic procedures. A stent is a tiny expandable metal mesh coil. It is put into the newly opened area of the artery to help keep the artery from narrowing or closing again when the stent reaches inside a narrow vessel. Balloon is inflated, so the mesh opens up, it compresses the surrounding subendothelial depositors, thus making the lumen patent. Thereafter, balloon is deflated and only mesh is left there. As shown in this diagram, a closed stent is passed inside the blocked coronary artery, balloon is opened there, plaque is compressed, lumen of the vessel and blood flow distal to the obstruction is restored. Also shown in this diagram, this involvement of left anterior descending coronary artery due to obstruction. A stent is passed inside. Balloon is inflated. What is coronary artery bypass grafting and triple vessel disease? Anatomically speaking, triple vessel disease is a condition in which right coronary artery, left anterior descending coronary artery, and left circumflex arteries are involved by coronary artery disease. Coronary artery bypass is a type of surgery that improves blood flow to the heart. 
indications for this surgery are severe coronary artery disease. As already said, coronary artery disease is a condition in which a substance called plaque builds up inside the coronary arteries. Plaque is made up of fat, cholesterol, calcium and other substances found in blood. Plaque can narrow or block the coronary arteries and reduce blood flow to the heart muscle. The patient presents with chest pain. If the blockage is severe, patient presents with angina. Angina is chest pain or discomfort, shortness of breath and in some cases heart attack can occur. Coronary artery bypass grafting is one of the treatment for this condition. In this procedure, a healthy artery or a vein from the body is connected or grafted to the blocked coronary artery distal to the obstruction. Proximal to the obstruction, we have normal blood flow, but distal to the obstruction, blood flow is less, so less oxygen is delivered to the body musculature. The grafted artery or vein bypasses blocked portion of the coronary artery. This creates a new passage and oxygen-rich blood is routed around the blockage to the heart musculature. So what are the various vessels used for this grafting? Among the arteries, there is a radial artery which can be used as a graft and internal mammary artery is also used for grafting. Among the veins, long saphenous vein is used for coronary bypass surgery. This is because of the fact that long saphenous vein in structure resembles an artery. It is tunica media, resembles the tunica media of an artery. What are the other uses of the radial artery? Radial artery is commonly used for measurement of we can take a sample of blood for arterial blood gas analysis from the radial artery. It can be used for beat to beat monitoring of pulse and BP. It is used for making an AV fistula in patients who are on dialysis. It is also used for radial artery cannulation. It is also used as a route for angiography. We can insert the cardiac catheter either through radial or through femoral artery. Brachial artery is also used for cardiac angiography. Let us discuss a clinical case scenario. A 60-year-old male presents with history of unconsciousness and fall. He was taken to a local PSC where medical officer on duty after examination found that BP of patient was 190 by 110 millimeters of mercury and pulse was 30 beats per minute. History, a young obese male patient, obesity being a risk factor for coronary heart diseases. There is certain loss of consciousness. There is history of fall. On examination, pulse of patient is 30 beats per minute. That is bradycardia. Bradycardia means decreased heart rate. And BP of the patient is 180 by 100. That is his hypertension. Now let us go to the conducting system of the heart before this. Conducting system of the heart consists of SA node. We generate impulses. These impulses are transmitted to AV node through internodal pathways. From internodal pathway, the impulse is passed through bundle of his and bundle of his divides into right and left bundle branches which in turn divide into Purkinje fibers. The conducting system of the heart is also supplied by the coronary arteries. If ischemia involves cardiac mus musculature, it can also involve the conducting system because the conducting system of the heart consists of modified cardiac myositis. They can also suffer from ischemia. So in this condition, we must remember the arterial supply of the conducting system. Whole of the conducting system is supplied by the right coronary artery except a part of the left bundle branch. So if something happens with the right coronary artery, it can involve the conducting system. For example, if the blood supply to the AV node is impaired, it comes from the right coronary artery. Now these impulses cannot pass from SA node to the ventricle through AV node. This is because of the fact AV node has undergone infarction or ischemia. Then what happens to the heart? The atria beat at their own rhythm and the ventricles beat at their own rhythm. This rhythm we call it as idioventricular rhythm. Atria beating at a faster rate because that is controlled by SA node in this case and ventricles beating at a slower rate 30 beats per minute. So 30 beats per minute is idioventricular rhythm. This rhythm cannot maintain the cardiac output. Cardiac output is defined stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. Here the heart rate is very slow so the cardiac output is less. What happens as a consequence of less cardiac output, less of oxygen reaches to the tissues of the body including the brain. 
that gives unconsciousness to the patient. The second thing which we have already explained on examination there is bradycardia. Bradycardia is due to block at the level of AV node and idioventricular rhythm of the left ventricle. The third thing which comes from the examination of this patient in the casualty is hypertension. This hypertension is because of the sympathetic system becomes overactive. It tries to maintain blood pressure so the blood pressure rises. What is heart block? From the above description, we say block somewhere in the conducting system. Why patient becomes unconscious and follows? I have already explained it. Why there is bradycardia rise in BRP? I have already explained it. What is cardiac pacing? What is importance of deltopectoral groove and it is contentous? The electric system of heart consists of SA node, AV node, bundle of his right bundle branch, left bundle branch, and Purkinje fibers. Conducting system is composed of modified cardiac myositis. They can be seen only with the help of special stains. Sympathetic nervous increases heart rate and force of contraction, whereas the parasympathetic system decreases heart rate and force of contraction. Blood supply of the conducting system. As a node is supplied by right coronary artery in 60% of the patients, AV node is supplied by the right coronary artery. Rest of the conducting system is also supplied by right coronary artery. Only a small part of left bundle is supplied by the left coronary artery. What will happen if there is interruption of blood supply to the conducting system? So atherosclerosis causes obstruction of a coronary artery. As a result of this obstruction, distal to obstruction, there occurs ischemia and conduction block resulting in bradycardia. For example, if this conduction block occurs at the level of AV node, no impulses pass from SA node to the ventricle AV node leading to bradycardia because now the ventricles beat at their own rhythm what is we called as idioventricular rhythm. This explains the bradycardia in this patient. Decrease in cardiac output is because decrease in heart rate. Cardiac output is equal to the stroke volume into heart rate. So as a result of bradycardia there is decrease in cardiac output. Less of oxygen is delivered to the rest of the body including the brain leading to unconsciousness and fall of the patient. ECG of the patient revealed complete heart block. Patient was referred to the cardiology department for further management. What are causes of the complete heart block? There can be reversible causes like hypokalemia or the patient is put on temporary pacing and after the hypokalemia is reversed, patient is discharged. If the cause is irreversible, patient needs permanent pacing. Complete heart block is defined a condition in which no impulse passes from SA node to ventricles. Ventricles beat of their own and this rhythm is called idioventricular rhythm. Heart rate of 30 beats per minute explains this condition. Decision taken by the cardiologist is to go for permanent pacing. Now what is a pacemaker? It is a metallic device which is implanted subcutaneously in the pectoral region. It generates impulses which are transmitted to heart by its leads. The leads are kept in the chambers of the heart. So the anatomy of this deltopectoral region now gains importance. There is a groove between deltoid and pectoral region called deltopectoral groove. The content of this groove is cephalic vein. This vein is important because the cardiologist inserts leads of the pacemaker in this vein as shown in the diagram. Leads of this pacemaker after entering the cephalic vein, they enter the subcalamin vein. After subcalamin vein, they go into the brachiocephalic vein. After there, they enter the superior vena cava, then right atrium. You can pick up this pacemaker on the x ray of a person. This is the x ray of the chest where the pacemaker is implanted. You can also see leads of the pacemaker, which appear as radio opaque shadows going from pacemaker to the right side of the heart. What is venous drainage of the heart? Venous blood from the heart is drained into right atrium by the following veins. Coronary sinus. All veins of the heart drain into coronary sinus except anterior cardiac veins and vena cordae minimi. Anterior cardiac veins open directly into the right atrium. Vena cordae minimi are also called Thebesian veins. They open into all four chambers of the heart but majority of them opens into the right atrium. Blood travels from the subendothelium into the Thebesian veins which are small tributaries running throughout the myocardium. These in turn drain into large veins that empty into the coronary sinus. 
The coronary sinus is the main vein of the heart located on the posterior surface in the coronary sulcus, which runs between the left atrium and left ventricle. The sinus drains into the right atrium. Within the right atrium, the opening of the coronary sinus lies between the opening of tricuspid valve and opening of inferior cava. It is guarded by the Thebaisian valve. This valve forms the boundary of triangle of cork. Triangle of cork contains AV node. It is important for ablation procedures and it is also important for manipulation of pacemaker leads. Tributaries of the coronary sinus are great cardiac vein which lies in the anterior interventricular sulcus, middle cardiac vein which lies in the posterior interventricular sulcus, small cardiac vein, posterior vein of the left ventricle, right marginal vein, left marginal vein or other tributaries of the coronary sinus. Vein is of the heart which do not open into coronary sinus. As already said, anterior cardiac veins which are 3 to 4 in number open directly into the right atrium. They drain the right ventricle. Vena cordi minimi, also called a Thebaisian venus. These are very small venus. They open into all four chambers of the heart, but most of them open into the right atrium. To understand the venous drainage of the heart, let us go to this diagram. So here, these are the anterior cardiac venus which open directly into the right atrium. This small cardiac vein which forms a tributary of the coronary sinus. This great cardiac vein lies in the in the anterior interventricular sulcus and drains into the coronary sinus. This left marginal vein it also drains into the coronary sinus. This is the posterior aspect of the heart where you can see the base anatomical base of the heart formed by the right and left atrium and diaphragmatic surface of the heart or inferior surface of the heart which are separated by the coronary sulcus containing coronary sinus. The veins which open into the coronary sinus are great cardiac vein, left marginal vein, left posterior ventricular vein, middle cardiac vein which lies in the posterior interventricular sulcus, small cardiac vein. The coronary sinus opens into the right atrium. Its opening lies between the opening of tricus valve and opening of inferior vena cava. As shown in this diagram, you can see the great cardiac vein opening in the coronary sinus. Small cardiac vein opening into the coronary sinus on its right side, middle cardiac vein opening into the coronary sinus. The small arrow represents the anterior cardiac veins which open directly into the right atrium. So I want to summarize my lecture as under. Cardiac musculature and conduct system is supplied by the coronary arteries. They are commonly involved in atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis leads to the stenosis of the vessel which in turn leads to angina, infarct or heart blocks. Presentations are variable. Patient can present simply angina or patient can present with massive infarct and death. And the investigations which are used for diagnosis of these conditions are ECG which can pick up both ischemia and infarct. Probe T becomes positive after 6 hours of myocardial infarction. Echo is basically cardiac ultrasound. It can pick up the movements of the different parts of the heart. Angiography is used to study the interior of coronary arteries. Coronary heart diseases are managed by angioplasty, stents, or permanent pacing. All veins of the heart drain via coronary sinus into right atrium except anterior cardiac vein and vena cordi minimi, which drain into the all chambers of the heart, but most of them drain into the right atrium. Now let us go for a quiz. Which of the following arteries supplies anterior two third of interventricular septum? Right coronary artery, left coronary artery, left circumflexus, left anterior descending. Anterior two third of the septum is supplied by the left anterior descending coronary artery through its septal branches. Sinoatrial node is supplied by which coronary artery? Right, left, mostly by right, left anterior descending coronary artery mostly supplied by the right coronary artery in almost in almost 60% of the cases. In the rest of the cases, it is supplied by the left coronary artery. Even node is supplied by which coronary artery? Right, left, left circumflex, left anterior descending. AV node is supplied by the right coronary artery. This vessel is given by the right coronary artery just proximal to giving its terminal branch that is posterior interventricular artery in case of right dominus. Dominant coronary artery is a branch from which coronary artery? Right, left, either from right or left, left circumflex. This vessel can be branched from 
right in case of right dominance or from left in case of left dominance or it can be branched from both in case of co dominance right dominance is seen in 85% of the cases left dominance is seen in 8% of the cases and co dominance is seen in 7% of the cases in right dominant coronary circulation interventricular septum is supplied by which coronary artery right left left and right left circumflex in case of right dominance posterior one third of the septum is supplied by the right coronary artery whereas it is anterior two third is supplied by left anterior descending coronary artery so it is supplied by both right and left coronary artery conus artery is a branch from which coronary artery right left both a and b left circumflex in the fandibulum or conus is supplied by both right and left coronary arteries which part of conduct system of the heart is supplied by the left coronary artery right bundle branch left bundle branch ab node sa node conducting system is supplied by the right coronary artery all parts of the conducting system are supplied by the right coronary artery except left bundle branch all statement about the left anterior descending coronary artery is supplies anterior two third of the septum and stimulates with the septal branch of the dominant coronary artery supplies inferior surface of the heart supplies right ventricular myocardium adjacent to the septum sees supplies inferior surface of the heart inferior surface of the heart is supplied by the posterior interventricular artery which can be branched from right or left coronary artery or from both which part of the conducting system of the heart is supplied by the left coronary artery right bundle branch left bundle branch ab node sa node left bundle branch is the correct option about the blood supply of the heart anterior two third of the heart is supplied by the septal branch of left anterior descending coronary artery posterior one third is supplied by the septal branches from the dominant coronary artery in case of co dominance posterior one third of the septum is supplied by both coronary arteries which of the following cardiac vein is, is not a tributary of the coronary sinus great middle small anterior anterior cardiac veins are not tributaries of coronary sinus they drain directly into the right atrium as shown in this diagram which of the following aortic sinuses is, is called a non coronary sinus anterior right posterior left posterior left anterior so there are three aortic sinuses two are coronary and one is non coronary right posterior is a non coronary aortic sinus which type of circulation has worse prognosis in case of acute coronary artery syndrome right dominant left dominant co dominant co dominant balance it patients with left dominant circulation have worse prognosis in the post angiographic period this is because of the fact that in case of left dominant circulation whole of the left ventricle and interventricular septum is supplied by left coronary artery dominant coronary artery is defined as artery which supplies major part of heart artery which supplies major part of left ventricle vessel which gives posterior interventricular branch vessel which supplies left ventricle and atrium the correct option is the vessel which gives posterior interventricular branch thank you for watching this video do not forget to like subscribe and share this video